Welcome back to Excel 2010 for Beginners, brought to you by ExcelLearningZone.com. This is lesson 11 of 12. If you landed on this lesson first, you can click on the link in the video window above to start back at the beginning. In lesson 11, we'll learn how to save our workbook file to the computer's hard drive, how to load it back up again, and how to print our spreadsheets. Here I am back in sheet one of the workbook that we started earlier today. I'd like to save this workbook to my computer's hard disk so that I have it for later. Again, as with everything else in Excel, there are several different ways to do this. I'm going to click on the floppy disk icon right there on my quick access toolbar. It says save if you hold your mouse over it. This opens up the save as dialog box. I'm using Windows Vista, but it should look pretty similar regardless of what version of Windows you have. I'm placed inside my Documents folder where I can save any documents that I create. Down toward the bottom of this window, you'll see a spot to type in a file name. Mine says book1.xlsx. The extension there, xlsx, simply means that this is an Excel workbook file. You may or may not see that file extension depending upon your settings in Windows. If you don't see it, don't worry about it. We'll learn about the different Excel file extensions in a future class. Make sure the Save As Type says Excel Workbook, which it should. That's the default setting. Now I want to type in a meaningful file name that tells me a little bit about what's in this workbook. So I'm going to click here in the File Name field and type in Sales Data 2010 so I know what's in this workbook file. Then I'll come down here in the bottom and click on the Save button. Now this file has been saved to my computer's hard drive. And if you look up top in the title bar, you'll see it says Sales Data 2010. That's the name of this workbook file. And remember, this workbook includes all of the sheets down on the bottom here. Sheet 1, Sheet 2, Sheet 3. These are all included inside of this file. Now let's pretend it's the end of the year and I want to get my spreadsheet ready to accept data for 2011. I've got the same four sales reps, but I don't need any of these numbers. So I'll select those and press delete. Now I want to save this sheet so I can use it for 2011, but I don't want to click on the save button right here because if I do, it will save it using the name that I gave it before. The save button here is just a quick save. If you've already specified a file name, it will save it over the old file. So what you have to do instead is click on the file tab and then click on save as. Save as will allow you to specify a different file name. So I can come down here and change the 2010 to 2011 and then click the save button. Now the file name has changed to sales data 2011 and I'm ready to start typing in new values. I usually recommend students do that first, do the save as operation first before you start changing the sheet. This way you save a copy of it and then you're working with the copy. I don't know how many times I've made changes to a spreadsheet and then hit the save button out of habit and then I said, oops, I just deleted all my old data. So be very careful when you're doing that. Now I want to close the workbook file. I don't want to completely close Excel down, so I'm not going to use the big red X up top here. I'm going to use this bottom X. This closes down the Excel workbook, but leaves Excel open. And now you can see this is blank down here where the spreadsheet goes. I have Excel still running, but there's no workbook open. Now to open a workbook, click on the File tab, and over on the right here you'll see Recent Workbooks. You can see any workbooks that you've worked with recently. Here you can see I have a calendar spreadsheet that I was using earlier, and my other two sales data workbooks show up on this list. If you want to open one of them, just click on it. There's my sales data 2010. 
I'll go ahead and close that sheet again. Now, if you click on File, and you don't see the workbook that you want to open in the Recent Workbooks list, click on the Open button right here. This will bring up the Open dialog box, and you can browse through all the folders on your computer to find the workbook file that you want to open. In this case, I'll just double-click on Sales Data 2011, and that will open it right up. The recent listing shows you any workbooks that you've worked with recently. It'll keep a list of the most commonly used workbooks. Now, as you can see, I have my calendar spreadsheet pinned to the recent workbooks list. If you have spreadsheets that you work with on a regular basis, and you want to make sure they always stay on the recent workbooks list, you can click on the little pin icon right there, and that will stick it to the recent workbooks list. It will always show up on here. If you decide later on that you don't need that workbook showing up on the recent workbooks list, just unpin it by clicking on the pin again. Normally when you open Excel, it brings you into a blank new workbook. If you're already working with a different workbook and you want to create another blank new workbook, just click on File and then New. The Available Templates window opens, and you can see there's lots of different templates in here that you can pick from to create new workbook files. There's calendars and budgets and fax covers, all kinds of different templates in here. We'll talk about these in a future class. But for now, I just want a blank workbook, so I'll double-click on the blank workbook template. And there we go. This is the same blank workbook that you'd have if you opened up a fresh copy of Excel. I'll just close this workbook down by clicking on the X here, and that'll bring me back to my Sales Data 2011 workbook. And yes, you can have multiple workbooks open at the same time and work between them. We'll cover that in a future lesson. When you're ready to print your spreadsheet, click on the File tab and come down to the Print option. Over on the right-hand side here, you'll see a little print preview of what your sheet is going to look like. It's Excel's best estimation of what the printed page will look like. Right here, you can select the number of copies. You can use these little arrows to go up and down. One copy. You can change the printer here if you have multiple printers on your computer or if you want to print to a network printer. And there are additional settings here if you scroll down what to print, whether you want collation, the page orientation, and so on. We'll cover all these options in a future lesson. When you're actually ready to print, click on the big print button on top here. The spreadsheet will then be sent down to the selected printer. If you don't want to print at this point, just click on the file tab again, and that menu will close. So now you know how to save your document, save it with a different file name, load your document back up again, and print it to your printer. This is the end of Lesson 11. You can click on the link above in the video window to jump to Lesson 12. Also, don't forget to subscribe and get notified when I release new free tutorials. For more information on my Excel courses, visit my website at 599cd.com xyt2010.